please remember to leave a like, a comment, share the video about, and if you haven't already, subscribe. Thank you. Well, isn't this just fantastic? Captain's Lock, Subdate 23103.6. I've been considering how to remove that Gloriana class ship that we shoved up Box House a few months ago. As it started to cause him a bit of a prolapse, we're a little concerned he won't be able to perform his bridge duties correctly, which means we have to flog him some more. Oh no, what a shame. Hello everyone, welcome back to another video. Today we're doing yet again a response video because the subject matter will tie into something I've made on a Megon 2, which I'm going to play. It's quite long, but I think it right to put this message across because the video we're also going to respond to ties into this, this misunderstanding about parental rights and children. I will include a timestamp at the top for those who do not want to watch the video taken from a Megon 2 now. So it is literally one day after the Capitol Pride Parade in Ottawa, Ontario, and Stephen Lecce the education minister is talking to the press saying that parents must be fully involved in students' decisions to change pronouns. A parent should 100% be involved in every aspect of their child's life. They have a legal right to, and they are bound by blood to. Until a child is either emancipated or old enough to no longer be a child and are therefore an adult and legally independent, they will do as their parent bloody well tells them. Children should be seen and not heard, and if their voices are somehow considered marginalized by other people, chances are you're prioritizing the wrong part. This, of course, comes after New Brunswick and Saskatchewan have both put forward policy, despite their school boards begging them not to, to forcibly out students to their parents. You make it seem like some taboo thing. Oh, your child uses these pronouns. This was a super secret thing that only your child should have shared. Bitch, no. A parent must be involved in every step of their child's life for as long as they are a child. Once they're an adult, they can do whatever they want or identify however they like. Until then, they do as they're damn well told, and the school must always be in good communication with that of the parents. Transparency is key. If things become clandestine, the parent cannot be the very best parent they can be. Creating these little environments, yeah, only breeds further separation between that of the parent and the child. It is vitally important to keep that as close as possible. Now, Ontario is not yet making this a policy. They're not putting forward any laws. I'm not surprised, considering the Canadian Prime Minister is known for a number of things. Embezzlement, blackface, and for being a ginormous cuck that wants to fuck Emmanuel Macron. All the while, give off the impression that he's a good little feminist when, if anything, he's a good little Castro offspring. But they're certainly laying the groundwork to do so. I think it's also really interesting to notice that the Liberals, uh, NDP, and Ontario Green Party all marched in the Pride Parade yesterday. Uh, the Conservatives were absent. Yeah, it turns out you don't need to virtue signal to make it seem like you give a damn about something. But at least in the context of the Conservative Party, in this instance, they proved the point that they don't care, like all politicians. Those that are present also don't care, as is proven already by your rant at the beginning. And while to some of you that might not be a surprise, they used to march. There used to be a contingent that called themselves LGBT Tory, which, dear God, the trans erasure of that one. Couple things, first of all, it's called a play on words, not trans erasure. They're not erasing trans people by putting Tory there instead. No, it's just their way of being cute. Second. There are many people arguing whether or not T should even be there in the first place since LGB is sexuality based and T is most certainly not. Or if it were to be that, you would be arguing that it's a fetish? Yeah, that, that wouldn't work so well if erasure is not good nor is fetishizing. But they used to march in the Pride Parade and now they don't and that is very intentional. Do you think it's because there are rights now obtained that they no longer need to be seen marching in favour of. Or do you think it's because things have gotten so batshit insane that being seen next to that is very much in the ballpark of bad optics for them? Don't forget here, you've had a very liberal Prime Minister for a number of years now. 
you got rid of conservatives after they were in charge for quite a while. They, for the sake of their own optics as your next election comes around, whenever that is, would want to be seen promoting what would better suit the voters who are now looking and going, no, I don't want this anymore, this is horrible. It's called playing the long game, but I'm sure there's an Illuminati point here you want to make. And all of this is happening with this infectious idea that's taking over of this idea of parents' rights, that parents have a right to know. They have a right to know if their child is going by a different name or using different pronouns in school. Before you go off and inevitably say that that is wrong, I'm going to tell you that that is right. Not because I want to be different from you, but because they are children, their rights are tethered directly to their parent. That parent unconditionally loves them, supports them, cherishes them, nurtures them, raises them. They do everything they can to give that child everything that they did not have. That's the point of a parent. Obviously, there are some that don't. Don't distract, all right, people? You know what I'm talking about. Focus on what a parent is supposed to be. The parent, in schools, must be 100% involved in every aspect of that child's life. That education is vital. If you're teaching your children from a young age to keep these kind of secrets from parents, they live a double life. Why? Because they don't want to upset their parent. Why? Because they don't want to rub their parent up the wrong way and cause problems. Openness and transparency, understanding, are vital. But go ahead and say that this is wrong, please. Just prove me right. And the thing that keeps hitting me about this is that parents don't have rights. Not parents' rights. Kids have rights. Oh dear, I see what we've done here. You've proven me right, and then you've inserted a swerve. I'm starting to understand now why my mod, I, decided to screen record the comment sections to this particular video. We'll get to it soon, don't worry. I'm sure that'll be quite the read. How fecked is your system that parents don't have rights? Please answer that, you functioning moron. Please tell me how kids have rights in the context of all of this. The answer is, by the way, they bloody well don't. Again, the parent overrules the child. The parent is the superior officer. The child is always the subordinate. You often find that with parents and their adult children. The children show their parent the utmost respect, provided they have a good relationship. And the offset, of course, someone now wants to say, oh, no, 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 not me, not me, I'm different. Okay. Individuals have rights. We have seen in our legal and justice systems that the decisions that parents make can be legally overridden by their children. Children who are old enough to understand a concept are old enough to provide their own independent consent to that. Which they should never be allowed to. Oddly enough, I have seen this used as legal argument for when a child under the age of 16 has sex with someone older. It's not has sex with, by the way. It really isn't. But I have to call it that because of YouTube. The reality is no, no, no. The parent always overrules the child. Always. If you have a system that enables that kind of crap where a child's voice overrules that of a parent, you find that that system is fecked. You absolute receipt. And if a kid knows what pronouns are, then frankly, they're able to consent to changing their own pronouns and their parents do not need to be involved in that decision. Actually, they kinda do. If a child chooses any random set of pronouns, the parent needs to know anyway what they're talking about, why they're going down this path, whether it is merely a form of expression of identity, whether it is a early start to gender dysphoria. These are vitally important to understand. Also, how they become exposed to this in the first place. That's key. If the education system introduces this to children, you are adding more confusion to a child as they go through the education system. This is fundamental. I don't understand how you don't get this. But the number one thing that this really shows is that Doug Ford and the Ontario Conservatives are absolutely willing to get in there and start slinging mud at the 2SLGBTQA plus community if they think it'll win them an election. 2SLGBTQA plus? What acronym is that? On this channel I've ripped into people who identify with all these different pronouns they choose and circles of trust for different pronoun levels, yeah? What the fuck is that? Stop making this into some kind of conspiracy theory. Turns out, you guys have been getting a one-way street for far too long and now you're noticing people are starting to push back and you're acting like it's some kind of, well, a theory to remove you from existence. It's not that at all. No one's erasing your existence, no one's trying to deny your existence. They're trying to say, 
Perhaps learn some decorum, restraint, and realize children should not be involved in any of this. By the way, conflating children with that of the 2SLGBTQA plus community. No, children are not a marginalized voice that needs to be heard within your group, and children should not be at Pride events either. Just to clarify, seen too much of that? No, never. We are not immune from this in Ontario. And while me, as a queer person who gets protested and has these things happen to them, knows that, I hope that for the people who haven't experienced it directly, that this is a bit of a wake-up call. I feel like I need to regurgitate some of the old phrases of Arbiter of Truth, Tell Me More, and Citation Needed. You say you've been protested, but it's anecdotal. Where's the actual proof? Show me something. This is not as much of a threat as you are trying to portray it, and I'm starting to understand why you got so much pushback. But we're not finished with your video yet. Once we're done, we'll get to your comments. They are saying this to test the waters, to see what the reaction is. Does their base like it? Does their base not really respond? Do a lot of people get really mad at them and actually then say get start getting motivated to vote? Hopefully the last one! Transphobia is a cancer, and they need to cut it out. In the context of your video, you're talking about children and conflating it with transphobia. That is quite clearly a false equivalence. You cannot include children in this discussion because of that word, children. Their voices are not marginalized because they are growing and developing. You are teaching them or trying to teach them to hide things from other people while simultaneously on social media broadcast everything about who you are. That is the nature of this ridiculous generation. It is embarrassing. So let's get to the comments, shall we? As you can see on the screen here, the video has been remarkably well received. The defense has been played, but the negligence and naivety of the person who made the video is quite clear and obvious, and the blowback is considerable. So they did eventually, because it's TikTok, respond to one comment. And that is where we're going to go next before we go to the comments on that one as well. This is something that I want to speak to about just because there is a bit of a myth when it does come to age of consent in Ontario, specifically in a medical context or an identity context. Well, as one who believes firmly in context being required for all things, I think it only right to give you the opportunity to try and perhaps reduce the amount of flack you get for the stupid crap that came out of your mouth in the first video. My frame of this is always the medical context because that's what I do. I'm a psychotherapist, I'm a medical practitioner, and so I know that as a medical practitioner, I do not have a magic age at which someone is then able to provide consent to medical treatment. Well, that's fascinating then, because when it involves children, the parent has the final say. They really do. Unless it is a medical emergency, your knowledge of the magic age, or lack thereof, is redundant. Because when it comes to children, and you were talking about pronouns predominantly in the video that got you all the heat, it's none of your f***ing business really, is it? Because again, parent first. I do however understand now more and more why people asked you if you had kids. It's the whole appeal to authority fallacy thing. Instead, what I have to evaluate is whether or not the individual in front of me understands and is capable of providing informed consent. Do they understand the risks, the potential benefits, what their other options are, and what's going to happen if they don't choose this course of action, and what could happen if they do choose it? I can agree with this system existing. For a fully grown adult, and I mean fully grown adult, I do not mean someone who is being conditioned to choose it, or be made to choose it. The risk now is too high. You say with your expert opinion, you evaluate. Okay, you're evaluating children. That is not acceptable. I do not support it, so I'm going to criticize you for even considering it. Don't think of it as some progressive thing to save the children, because you're clearly not thinking of the children in the first place. You're taking play pretend, to the extreme of irreparable harm. That's all I need, and as a result, I might have a 13-year-old who can consent to psychotherapy treatment, and a different 16-year-old who can't without their parents' involvement. I'll be honest, in all instances, parents should be involved, because child. From a completely legal stance, medical procedures that involve a child, the parent must be involved in. How is this complicated? Your expert opinion is not the final hurdle. No, the final hurdle is the parental consent. Which means when it comes to things like the child's identity, every part of that the parents needs to know. So they can either understand 
they can help or they can perhaps be a parent and ensure their child doesn't fall too far down a rabbit hole that they cannot climb out of. Just because kids develop at different ages and in different ways. Which is why the age in this instant of consent for the context you have provided is redundant and it should 100% be an adult making a decision on an adult's body, not a child's body. You are posting your content to social media and social media is telling you, you are wrong, you colossal smeghead. But you are acting so magnanimous because you believe your appeal to authority fallacy is enough to hide behind. It's actually the same in family law. There's no magic age at which a child is uh, able to decide which parent they live with after a divorce. You have to assess the individual understanding and capacity of that child and what their desires are and therefore whether or not they are competent to make that decision. Yet again with a false equivalence. Now I call it that because you can't make any real comparisons to what you are talking about. And in this one, there is no magic age for a child to choose which parents to live with because invariably when it comes to the certain types of divorces that they typically are messy, the children go to the caregiver, which predominantly is the mother, which means it is not a decision that a child plays a part in, nor should they because they are the child. Now I disagree with the whole caregiver thing, but society has yet to actually evolve past that point. And I could go on about that, but it's a distraction because it's a false equivalence. Obviously, we do have a couple of hard and firm rules when it does come to a minimum age that someone has to be before they can do something. You gotta be 18 before you can sign yourself out of school and leave for an appointment. You gotta be 16 to drive, 18 to vote, 19 to buy alcohol. You gotta be a minimum age in order to consent to sex, because that's a very important one to protect children from adult predators. Why did you say that so weirdly? There's a fun thing here where you've mentioned all these ages of consent that seem to hover between 16 and 19 years of age. Quite important. What's the minimum age for this transitioning thing? But when we're talking about a self-identity, remember, when we're talking about a chosen name or pronouns, that is not something that is getting, like, stamped on your government ID. That's not what we're dealing with. We're talking about what name you are chosen to be referred to in school. You see what you've done there? Any pseudo-intellectual can do that kind of crap, where you try and deflect with distraction about other things or falsely equate ages of consent of one thing to then bring it back to self-identity. You're trying to play mental gymnastics, but you're doing it on the internet, which is full of a certain type of tism, where they see through that and go, uh, bitch, that doesn't work for us because we're able to, to logic it out. It made no sense. You absolute screwdriver. And frankly, I changed that when I was a kid, without my parents' involvement. Yeah, I'm sure your parents are really happy about that. Just as an additional point I should obviously make, your parents should have 100% been involved. Going round them behind their backs does not breed a healthy relationship with your parents, or because you wanted to change your name. I'll be honest, I was born Omegon. Do you think I like that name? No, it's not not a good name. You get picked on because you stand out. Which is a somewhat ironic name then, given the origin of a Megon. My full name is Genevieve, but as a kid growing up, I went by Jenna. That's what my family called me, and as a result, that was the name that was on my paperwork at school. But I never really liked the nickname Jenna, and when I went to high school, I decided, actually, you know what? I don't want to be called Jenna by my teachers anymore. You do realize the reason your nickname was Jenna is because the name you said is also pronounced Genevieve, right? You do realize that rather than the pretentious French interpretation part that you did with your bastardization accent. Yes, Canadians don't actually speak French. Don't even get me started in Quebec, all right? You got triggered because your name is pronounced differently somewhere else and they ran with that as a nickname. So much so you changed your name because Nickname. Bitch, I've had at least seven nicknames in my life and I didn't like any of them. But I allowed them to continue because it meant at least people knew who I was. I want to be called Genevieve. And as a result, I said, hey, filling out that paperwork on my own at 14, I want to be called Genevieve. That's the name that I want to have appear on the paper. And that's all it took. That's all it did. They didn't have to ask my parents. Why would they? I see we're doing another little peculiar equivalence using anecdotal evidence of you having a legal name 
but it not being reflected in legal paperwork at a school. You do realize how that is not remotely comparable. A clerical error, a clerical error is enough for you to go, right, this is my career now. I'm now gonna compare this to people who identify as nouns, to people who identify as verbs, adjectives, cause screw proper nouns. People who identify as fairy, vampire, dragon, kin, not Cthulhu kin, that is the one legitimate one, hi. Are we gonna add Jedi gender in the future as well? You are such an absolute broken battery charger. I was able to understand the benefits, the consequences, what it was gonna be. Most kids can at the time that they start to want to do those things. There's no magic number, kids can make their own choices. You're an idiot. You cannot compare your lived experience because your lived experience is not the same in the slightest. Yours has some legal merit. Everything else you're talking about, no. Everything else requires the parent. Although to be fair, yours did too, really, for the school to acknowledge you by your actual name of Genevieve. <sighs> yes, I'm being that guy. Let's look at the comments, see how people received this one, shall we? As you can see, we're starting off with sycophants who understand and appreciate the information, but also seeming very familiar with the ages of consent. There is a big difference between a nickname and socially transitioning. You're being disingenuous and you're not a parent. You obviously don't have children. God obviously knows what he's doing. Leave kids alone. I'm honestly curious, do you think your personal perspective causes a bias in scenarios presented to you? Being an RP and the ethics I'm bound to, like adhering to evidence-based best practice, is definitely a lens I have to apply to my decision making. I'm calling doubt on that. My kid isn't even two and told us they wanted the full version of their name. Children are full people and can make their own choices. Hard to disagree, of course. Children should be seen, not heard. Effing weirdo. Thanks for supporting trans kid. I'm a parent and believe a child's autonomy, safety and agency. You're a bad parent if you are one. And you're a dangerous person in this world, like Nazi person, if your opinion, and it's, I feel like that one's a bit of a troll. Now, obviously, in all these comments that are continuing to go on the screen, yes, people are going to agree, and many are going to disagree. Some do latch onto, you don't have kids, therefore you don't really know what you're talking about. I think we're in a very dangerous position right now, where many who, even if they have children or not, believe this is what's best for kids. I don't agree. I do not believe children should be experiencing social transitioning in the slightest. I really don't. And I don't believe the medical version either. I believe children should be allowed to be children and we need to stop pushing gender onto them. Just let them grow into adults first. If there is something obviously wrong, yes, doctors step in, but it has to be something quite different. What you, Cyril Cinder, push is a dangerous message. And also you use a false equivalence and your low IQ audience to try and get people to understand your perspective, one that is born entirely out of anecdotal evidence and a misunderstanding over your name and your dislike of a nickname. Which is somewhat ironic, since you're essentially trying to push it to be okay for names of choice, but your nickname not being your choice was the problem. Okay, I, I see what we're dealing with here and it's quite frustrating. So now you should have suitable context, considerable context at that, as to what I think concerning parental rights and their children and education. I haven't even mentioned homeschooling yet because that would be a whole different level of amusing. Your teacher is your mother and you're not allowed to tell them secrets because they're your mother. But you told your teacher who is your mother. Okay. We have another one of these types of videos to respond to. It's nowhere near as long, so I do believe I can articulate my points a little more concisely. Let's talk about parental rights for a second because it's become evident that it's being used currently in this fight against queer people. Oh, that seems loaded, doesn't it? Generally, I don't want to associate anyone from LGBTQ and all the other letters and children. It feels like a false equivalence. I don't mean in the sense of, oh, you can't hang out with them because they're queer. No, I mean in the sense of the discussion of children's rights, parental rights, and those of LGBT community rights. Yes? If that's too complicated for you, you've made it this far and you're already confused. I'm quite impressed. And especially queer kids. I'm sorry, queer kids? That was a YouTube channel, some cringy little cowbag who played a ukulele singing songs educating children about LGBTQI and all the other letters which was considered quite highly inappropriate. The definition of queer can be considered strange, odd, or sexual or gender identity. In the context of children, not remotely applicable. Because if we're going to push that, 
the word groomer is going to feature in your life quite a bit. Who need more protections than ever before. They do not, children that is, require additional protections unless those protections are to prevent people from grooming them with ideas of sexualities and gender expressions that are not remotely applicable or appropriate for a child to be uh, exposed to. Yes, this is not difficult. When it comes to parents, they want to make sure their child is the very best version of them. When it comes to education, the role of the teacher is to ensure the syllabus is being enforced and the children are getting the correct education so when they leave education they can be the very best version of themselves according to state law. I mention that explicitly because the syllabus is set by idiots. A lot of it is not practical anymore and is creating a rather weak generation and don't get me started on the number of degrees I now consider to be absolutely fake. But back to the original point of queer kid. The very idea of more protections for children who identify as queer is already a concern because that shouldn't be a thing. But then we've seen many parents pushing for their children to transition before adulthood. Many of those children have turned back because they've had their childhood ruined by parents who conditioned them. Parental rights are fundamental, but some parents don't even know where the bloody line is. Like in Saskatchewan and in the US, parental rights are being used to thwart any rights of autonomy that the kid might have. Children do not have autonomy in the same sense of an adult having autonomy because a child cannot make what is considered an informed decision. You can condition a child because they're more vulnerable than that of a typical adult with an average IQ because they are still learning to be a person. They are still learning the very basics of life. You are not born into this world with a sudden instinct to understand so many complicated issues. Expression is certainly one of them, identity another. If it were so simple and we all knew who we were, I promise you there'd be a vast number of people going around saying, I'm Batman. And I'm sorry, but kids do have autonomy. The only autonomy they get is the autonomy their parents grant them. Concessions made as one child gets older and they start to understand more and more about the world. They earn the right to be a bit more free. As they get older and older, the parent will want them to move away because they will believe they've taught them everything they need to know to make the most out of their life. Get a job, find someone, marry, have kids perhaps, live happily ever after or the usual get divorced and pay an obscene amount of child support to somebody who is clearly a money-grubbing dick. We've already established this. For example, if a kid needs a blood transfusion and the parents don't want to, it's not the parents' right to refuse that blood transfusion for that kid because it is life-saving. Now that is a yes and no thing. Firstly, it's a false equivalence. You cannot compare medical necessity with gender expression. They are not the same because if we take the gender expression down to its base level, you still end up, when you go to medical issues, go down to male or female. The yes parties, of course, that can be considered a form of child ABUSE. However, there are mitigating factors that do in fact negate. Faith is one of them. Jehovah's Witnesses are renowned for not accepting blood transfusions, so alternatives are granted, and they do exist now. Thankfully, they exist now. Others don't wish to have blood transfusions, of course, and they are well within their right to refuse that. You may not like the parent has made that decision, but that is a decision the parent makes. The child does not understand enough to be able to say they can agree or disagree. But back to the original, it's a false equivalence. You're trying to sensationalize to make a grander point that falls flat when held to a level of scrutiny. In the same respect, if a kid only needs to like use a different name and pronoun in school, there might be a reason and a good reason they're not coming out at home. In the video I showed you, I mentioned how I don't agree with this clandestine attitude towards one's family because if anything it breeds further dissent and of course separation of family. The family is the most important part of any child's life. Tu fais pour la famille. Simple as that, you do for family. This isn't a Dom Toretto thing by the way, it is intrinsic, it is fundamental. If a child wants to keep a secret from their family at a young age, it is only going to cause further problems down the line. It's going to breed a more introverted child for one. We want children to be more extroverted, not stuck indoors because they're too afraid to go outside. Hi, I'm a bit more introverted than I'd like to be. There are many people who are now and we're quite happy with it, of course, but we wouldn't want children to be just like us. No, we want them to be better than us. So if there are parts of their identity they're confused about, one does have to call into question the bloody school syllabus. And one does then call into question 
what they're being exposed to. We've seen some of the books. Some are highly inappropriate. I saw a parent kicked out of a parental meeting for being rude when they were reading directly from a book for children at that school. And yet the book was fine. That's what the teacher said. I wish I had the clip to hand. I think many people have seen these clips. They're quite bad. And they need a safe place to be themselves. Apparently that's at home. When one is confused, they can raise the issue with their parent. Of course, many parents don't care for it. The queer child expression part, identity, gender, right? I don't think children should be exposed to any of those subjects until they're adults. If they then, as an adult, want to explore their identity, they can as an adult. As a child, they need a few things. A healthy home, a healthy life, a healthy education, maybe a job as well to teach them some bloody values and responsibility. And so to hell with this idea of parental rights when it comes to kids who have their own consent and then their own bodily autonomy and their own autonomy to their personhood that need to be protected. While not intending to sound as callous as this is about to, I can tell you don't have children. If you did, you would be terrible as a mother because you should protect your child because that is what a parent will do. You do not understand that bond between parent and child where the parent will do everything to protect them. You discard it under the guise of, but the child's voice takes front and center. The child cannot make any reasonable informed decisions. You can sit them with a bunch of experts, surround them and make them feel like they're all fuzzy and cuddly. Reality is when you add a lot of people into a room or even one person telling them what they are, or what they should experience or express, or giving them answers that they do not understand, you invariably lead them down a path that just ends up with what we see on TikTok, quite frankly, which is where you are. Very confused people who accomplish nothing, form a societal entropy, where people spend an inordinate amount of time on social media chasing attention and espousing how their individuality is unique, when in reality they're all the same. Any good parent would want their child to be the absolute opposite to that.